And we're back for another episode. In this episode, I'm going to be unlocking the raid Return to Ivalice. And as always, hello from Mifri. Alright. So, we are here in Kugane at 12.12. Um, and we need to talk to Keaton. So, the quest is called Dramatis Personae. So, Keaton knows of someone seeking your acquaintance. So, welcome, my lady. There is a young maiden here who would speak with you. Okay, so it's not like dagger. Never mind. So, miss, the adventurer has arrived. And here she is, the liberator of both Doma and Alamigo in the flesh. I am Lena Mayraflil, correspondent for the Raven. You may recognize me from my expose on the secret lives of the Homunilicum. In case you're new to my YouTube channel, I don't try and pronounce names which are written in a real weird way. It's more funny to mess them up on purpose. Uh, is there a problem? So, Muji. That would be my sister. People mistake us all the time. Same profession, you see, and we do bear a passing resemblance. When last I heard, she was still assigned to the Botanist Guild in Gridania. Poor thing. But enough small talk. It's not... For nothing that I've been standing here since yesterday. Morning of the off chance you've passed by. Yesterday morning? Or have you been waiting several months? Sorry, Mifri was busy. She was trying to keep her hairstyle the way it is. Uh, no, I am here because actually it's best you heard it from Alma. I am but an observer. Alma being... Alma, come. I found her. This is the adventurer of, of whom you spoke? Question mark. Indeed it is. Please, I beg of you, find my father. You are his only hope. <laughs> it's alright, Alma. We are attracting unwanted attention. Might I suggest a change of venue? We will await you before the Prima Vista. The Theatre Barge has a berth at the airship landing. Really, they brought the Prima Vista into this game. If you've ever played Final Fantasy IX, it's the airship at the beginning of Final Fantasy IX that carries around the troop around the world. Why not? Cool. So guys, in case you're wondering what the hairstyle is, this is the lightning hairstyle. Main character of Final Fantasy XIII. Okay, where are we going? This way. Yeah, I should actually check the map before I start running in random directions. So here we go. Here's Lena. So as I said before, I think it better we continue this conversation in the privacy of the young lady's barge. It's not that I don't trust anyone here, it's simply that I don't trust anyone here. Okay. So, Gate Guard, um, mine Gumo has been instructed to look out for you. In future, speak with him when you wish to gain admission to the docks. Awesome source. Cool. Aha. So, thank you for coming, Mifri. You're probably wondering why I've summoned you to an airship, and a Garlean one at that. 
Allow me to explain on the shuttle. This is cool. Holy moly. Okay. Well, they really went all out for this one, didn't they? So the Prime of Vista serves as both stage and home to the majestic Imperial Theatre Company. So you can keep that Dirk in your drawers. No one here is a member of the Imperial Army, nor are there any spies within the troop, at least uh, no known spies. Ask anyone and they will readily attest. The Majestic Imperial Theatre Company are the finest uh, practitioners of the dramatic arts to be found anywhere on the free great continents and beyond. They have admirers throughout the Empire and its territories, and even boast a sizable following Gridania, hence my assignment to their story. It is a little known fact, outside Garlemald at least, that the late Emperor was a devoted patron of the arts who supported various theatre troops to the tune of much coin. Indeed, Solus was a an arm sorry, was so enamoured of the majestic players that he ordered the construction of this very airship that the troop might perform in every corner of the Empire. When his grandson took the throne, however, everything changed. Now all the theatre troops, domestic and foreign, must submit their works for approval by the Central Imperial Board of Censors. If a play is deemed vulgar or inflammatory, it is banned and the troop denied their writs for, of transit. The worst offenders, they will never be heard from again. This policy has effectively left playwrights with one of two options. Uh, compromise their creative integrity to curry favour with his radiance, or put down their quills altogether. The principal of the Majestic, however, chose a third option, to express his disapproval of the new Emperor's policies um, obliquely in obstensible um, political works. I can't even read anymore. Jesus. So I pray forgive my earlier outburst. I am Alma Bass Lexer Tale of Principal Jamahala So mayhap you have heard of my father's latest play, The Zodiac Brave Story. On the surface, it is an innocent retelling of a well known Galian fairy tale, hardly worthy of the censor's attention. But beneath it is something quite different, a fact the censors failed to spot when they approved the manuscript for public performance. The play quickly became a huge success. The common folk loved its fantastical story, while the learned classes appreciated its true message. By the time the Imperial Board of Censors realized their mistake, it was too late. But no longer in position to prohibit the performance outright without admitting fault, they took aim at the company's purse strings instead. Before long, noble patrons began to withdraw their support, fearing to be associated with the troop. And by the end, even the learned felt compelled to feign ignorance. By bleeding the majestic of their funding, the censors robbed them of their voice. And none of this has made it any clearer as to why you're here, right? Allow me, Lena. Oh, Sid. Hello. So I've known Genominus uh, since we were students at the Magitech Academy. When I heard his daughter was in Kugani looking to enlist the aid of an adventurer, I felt compelled to give her your name. Sorry for not announcing myself sooner, old friend.
uh, Jamones and I were from different worlds, but that only served to fuel our friendship. Many were the nights we would prattle on into the wee small hours, warm flagors of Peter Dale numbing our minds to the others' naive ideologies. Yet no matter where our conversations began, it would invariably end with him telling me how he was going to change the Empire from the inside out. The truth was to be his path into the people's hearts. Even after the Empire forced him from his home, Jamonis never gave up hope that his work might change the world. So art will ever strain against the artificial bounds and borders, man-made walls and misguided wars. It is in such times of uncertainty that we must needs embrace our calling and take to the skies so others might do the same. So what I'm trying to say rather poorly I concede is that not all Garleans are honed from the same stone. Just as there are those who pledge their lives to the Empire, I would never think to question the authority of its leaders. There are those like Alma's father and myself whose love for their country does not blind them to its flaws. Still, trying to sell the sack of sunflower to an Alamegan or a Doman who has watched his family consumed in the flames of a magic reaper, Magitek Reaper. How many Eorzean adventurers do you think would leap to the opportunity to help an Imperial search for her missing father, and in Garlean territory no less? But you, you are different. You have seen enough to know that the line between good and evil is not defined by race, colour or creed. So what say you? Um, I could never turn my back on a damsel in distress. I would make a poor adventurer were I to shy from adventure. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I do wonder in the long term if these choices we make when we speak actually will have an effect somewhere down the line. I said that twice. Uh, now that you understand the nature of the task, perhaps Alma could provide some insight as to where we might begin our search. So, shortly before my father disappeared, he began work on his next play, a successor to the Zodiac Brave story. Uh, I am getting ahead of myself. Please follow me. I mean, isn't the Zodiac Brave story to do with the relic? Like, I wonder if they're gonna say that the the next relic is in like the Garlean Empire or something. Thing. So through adventure and hardship, young Delita, a boy of common blood, becomes a hero, culminating to in the birth of the mythical kingdom of Ivalice. But that is where the story ends, there are no records of anything that follows. Was Principal Jamone simply going to invent something? My father believed that he had discovered evidence of a second hero, one whose efforts went largely unnoticed, but without whom Delta would never have risen to the throne. His was the next tale he wanted to tell, the true Zodiac Brave story. A second hero? According to my father's studies, this young man was one of... Delita's closest friends and confidants. That is, until the untimely passing of Delita's sister forced the two to part ways. Yet the unnamed hero continued to provide aid to his friend by thwarting the machinations of those who would scheme against Delita, thus paving the way for the pauper's rise to... Regant. You must forgive me, but I've never heard anyone make such claims. How exactly did your father come to buy this information? That is a long story. 
One which begins and ends with Jamonis becoming lost in the very legend he sought to lay bare. Even as far back as our academy days, Ivalice had Jamonis firmly in its gr his grasp. Um, he flatly refused to believe the story was just a fairy tale. So when he was finally driven out of Garlemald, it was only natural that he should choose this of all places as his refuge, was it not Alma? That is correct, Master Garland. As long as has been my father's belief that the ruins of ancient Ivalice lie beyond Nagzia, uh, buried beneath the sands of the Dalmasca Desert. Poor Dalmasca, the kingdom prospered in relative isolation for countless generations until the Empire came calling. When not uh, touring, my father would organize expeditions into the Damasca Desert to search for proof of Ivalice's existence. Sometimes he would bring back strange artifacts, ancient tomes and crystals, crystals unlike any others. My father called them Arisite and claimed they were vital to proving his theories. This is one such crystal. By the Twelve, it's magnificent. Um, Evolution legend tells of crystals bequeathed by the gods onto those who would be kings. It is during his quest to gather Arisite that young uh, Dalita rises to prominence. I must have heard the tales a thousand times from my nursemaid, but that is all it ever was, a tale. My father would often tell us how the Orisite spoke to him. At the time, we assumed he was speaking figuratively, that the stone's beauty roused his muse. But then he began acting strangely. How so? Following our arrival here in Hingashi, my father spent most of his time uh, cloistered in the ch his chambers, poring over his past research. And through he was sorry, and though he was alone, we could oft hear him in conversation. It was not uncommon for my father to recite the lines as he wrote them, but it soon became clear that this was something else. It was as if he was talking to my mother, my mother who passed several winters gone. Might this not have been out of mere loneliness, or perhaps the strain of your flight from Garlemald? Possibly, but that would not explain the voices which answered him. So Alma, who are these people? I told you I did not require any help finding father, especially from outsiders. So good to st uh, for you to join us, Ramza. Allow me to introduce... Enough, Master Sid. We may be shunned by the Empire, but we're still guardians, and we still have our pride, unlike some it seems. We require neither aid nor pity of foreign rabble. Have you forgotten where you are, brother? It is we who are the foreign rabble. This land and its customs are still but unknown to us. We would be fools to conduct our search without a proven guide. Your sister is right, Ramza. As for my good friend here, your mistrust is ill-placed. I will personally vouch for her character. In all the time I have known her, she has never once let anything as insignificant as race, creed, colour... Sorry or creed color her judgment you are lucky to have her but we would have you master garland why do you refuse us you know why unless this affair with omega is resolved my hands are tied it pains me to refuse you and your sister but it pains me far more to leave jamonis to his fate i am sorry You need not apologize. I let my emotions get the better of me. After what happened in Rabanasta, it may be time to admit we're out of our depth. My brother's last expedition met with tragedy in the ruins of the capital city. He barely escaped with his life. The Empire turned Rabanasta into a death trap. You were a fool to set foot there without a proper escort. I realize that now, Master Garland, but at the time I saw an opportunity to rescue our father and I took it. 
Whatever led you to believe your father was in Dalmasca's capital? My father's fascination with Evolution Legion began with a trip to the Antedevlian city long before the war. Call it a premonition, but something tells me that it is where he has returned. Now, you must excuse me, I need some time to think. Then Alma, I shall leave you and your brother in Mithri's capable hands. She has ever repaid my trust with interest. You would do well to grant her yours. Thank you, Master Garland. We will not forget this kindness. Cool. So let's carry on. So Master Garland seems to think highly of you, so I withhold judgment until after Dalmasca. Cool. Right, next quest is called A City Fallen. Ramza is itching to depart. So well, Damascus is nested in a foreign, sorry, forgotten corner of the Empire's outermost territories. I do not foresee any trouble from the standing army, but would suggest committing to memory the locations of each of the barges' exits, just in case. Um, as far as the flight itself, the currents above, Damascus are as wild as the land below. Uh, you may want to hold on. I think the hardest time remembering if uh, Ivalice is 9 or 12. Fairly sure Rabanasta is 12. But Ivalice. I thought that was 9. I could be wrong. I guess it's been a while since I played these games. I guess it's more likely twelve. They wouldn't mention they wouldn't mix it, so I guess it's twelve I was thinking about, not nine. I'm fairly sure the Prime of Vista is Climacy Nine though. Don't quote me on that. Uh we'll complete our descent to Rabanasta in the shuttle. Who's that dragon head? Ramza. I thought I made myself clear, Alma. The capital is simply too dangerous. Father would never forgive me if I were to lose you trying to rescue him. Come, we are wasting time. I wonder what the name of the Pharmacy 9 world is. Rabanaster. I wonder if it will have the same music. Pharmacy 12.
According to my father, Rabanasta was already a thriving city some thousand years ago. But after performing several private excavations beneath the so-called Desert Sapphire, my father came to the conclusion that it was not the first settlement to stand here. Then your father believes that Rabanasta sits atop the royal city of Le Lesalia, capital of Ivalice. But if that's true, I could it could change history. We would be famous. Famous? Are you sure you don't mean rich? Puh, your kind are all alike. Parasites grown fat on the sweat and suffering of others. Bold words for a boy uh, of but 16 summers. And what, pray tell, have I done to deserve such a spite? I only wish to learn the truth behind the disappearance of the Empire's foremost playwright. If that should lend lead to something bigger, well then, it would be I would be the worst reporter in the realm if I did not pursue it. So, nah. I need to play through all these old Final Fantasies to actually try and remember everything. So yes, yes, we can argue about this now, or we can return to the Prime of Vista and report to our army of adventurers that it's time to begin the expedition. I humbly suggest the latter. So you see, it is as I said, brother. Let them come to us. Should we kill them now? So, no, it is the time is not right. When has that stopped us before? Fool, do you see that one? Slayer of gods, they call her. Warrior of light. Don't mess with the Mifri. Yeah. So Royal City of Rabanasta is now accessible. Accessible. Cool. Alright. So um, I'm obviously going to record doing the event on a separate video. So anyway guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. And as always, goodbye from me. And goodbye from Mifri. Bye guys.